you notice this? Isn't it, isn't it funny how when you ask people to describe their weaknesses, they always manage to turn it around and make it sound like a strength? You know, the person says, uh, my weakness is that I care too much. Or, or, or the girl who says, uh, my weakness is that I'm just too much of a perfectionist. It is kind of funny how we do that, but I suppose, it, I suppose it's understandable because we want to make ourselves look as good as we can to everybody else, right? What's much less easy to understand, though, is that when you ask people to describe their strengths, I mean, the very things that would make them look really good to everybody else, they wind up being so vague, so vanilla, so bland in describing their strengths. I mean, after a lifetime of interviewing people about their strengths, do you want to know the most common answer? Like, if you were to bet money on what answer will I hear when I ask that person, this is the answer you'd make your money on. Um, I like dealing with people. Yes, I do. People. No mention of which people, whether it's strangers or friends or, or colleagues or guests. It's just people. I like dealing with people. If you're going to get to be one of the two out of ten that plays to their strengths most of the time, that takes control of their day, their hours, their minutes at work, then, then you've got to become good. You've got to get really good. You've got to get very detailed, very specific at describing your own strengths. I mean, I like dealing with people. What, what is that? Which people? What are you doing with the people? Are you, are you selling to them? Are you serving them? Are you taking care of them? Are you responding to their needs? If you like selling to them, are you, are you selling to a lot of different people during the course of a day? Do you really like getting to know people who are strangers, winning them over, getting them to like you, then selling to them, then moving on like a, like a retail environment? Or do you like building a really long-term, established, authentic relationship with someone and only then trying to persuade them to buy what you have to sell? Well, boy, those are two really different things. Or maybe you don't even like closing at all. You don't want to get a close. You just want to build influence. Well, which one of those applies to you? Or does neither apply to you? But if you're going to get to be one of the two out of ten, you've got to get to that level of detail, that level of granularity in describing your strengths. The good news is, I mean, daunting though that sounds, the good news is that that isn't actually as hard as it seems. You don't need a psychologist or a manager or a teacher or an HR department even to tell you what your strengths are. You can do this. Because your strengths have certain, well, they have certain signs to them, certain sort of telltale signs, characteristics. And if you look back at your week, last week at work, and you try and look for those signs, you'll be able to filter them out and I think be able to see from those signs what your true, most dominant, most powerful strengths are. Here's the first sign. And it, yeah, I mean, it's an obvious one, but pay attention to it. Your strengths have a yearning quality to them. They're like, a, they're like a force inside you trying to get out. So watch to see which activities last week did you look forward to doing? Which activities did you find yourself volunteering for? Now, there may not be that many of them because you did a lot of stuff last week, but see whether you can pull the curtain aside a wee bit and look for which were those activities you actually look forward to doing. Here's a second sign. Uh, your strengths are those things you're naturally inquisitive about right? When you, when you start doing an activity that's around a strength of yours, you don't struggle to concentrate, do you? Your mind doesn't wander. You're like in the moment. You're in the zone. You're focused. You're concentrated. Time just sort of zips by and you look up and like a whole hour's gone by. Okay, what were those activities last week? Were there any, any activities that you stay inquisitive around, that you keep learning around, that you keep researching around? Those are all great signs of a strength. And then last, your strengths have this, they have this restorative quality to them, don't they? When you're done with them, you may be physically tired, but you're not psychologically drained. You're not empty. You're not depleted. You're actually uplifted. You're sustained. They fulfill you. That's actually why you want to do them again, because you want that feeling again. Okay, look for those activities. Were there any activities last week that left you feeling kind of magnificent? What were they? Look back for those three clues. Which activities did you look forward to? Which activities did you stay inquisitive around and in the moment? And which activities left you feeling strong and magnificent? You see anything? Really, try it. Just look, look back. Do you, do you see anything emerging? Any activities, any, any patterns there last week that you, where you can see 
some of those signs. When I do that, three things come to mind for me. Three strengths sort of come to the fore. Um, first, I need you to a really good housekeeping supervisor. She's got 13 housekeepers she manages. She's brilliant at it. I love doing that. Interviewing anybody who's really good at their job about why they're good. Uh, second, I gave a presentation when I prepared. I, I'm not good and I don't like giving presentations when I haven't. I, I need to know my stuff, get prepared. And if, I, if I've done that, then I kind of like giving a presentation. And then third, I read an article, read, took notes on an article about the New Zealand rugby team, which, would you believe, is, and always has been, the best rugby team in the world. Which is kind of weird, because there's only three million people on those islands. There's more sheep than New Zealanders, and yet somehow they always wind up beating teams from countries, you know, ten times their size. Love doing that, interviewing and studying and reading up and on organizational excellence, particularly mysterious organizational excellence like that. Picking out activities like that for me is really important work, because those three activities, interviewing someone who's excellent at their job giving a presentation when I prepared and, and researching organizational success, those, those three things are strengths of mine. Now in saying that, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm good at them. I mean, I'm not bad at them, but, but I'm not great at them. I mean, with each of them, I have huge room to grow, huge improvement that's got to be made in each one of those. All I'm saying is those three activities, those three very specific activities make me feel strong. And that's the best definition of a strength, for you as well as for me, for everybody. A strength is an activity that makes you feel strong. I mean, I know that's going to sound odd to you because you've been raised, like I've been raised, to believe that your strengths are things you're good at, your weaknesses are things you're bad at. And it's not like that that definition's wrong, it's just not enough. A strength isn't just what you're good at. It's like the definition is, is incomplete and it leaves out all the stuff that you really want to know about, all the really interesting stuff. You don't want to know what you're good at or what you're bad at. That's, that's an outcome. It's happened. It's over. It's the past. You don't want to know about the past. You want to know about the future, don't you? I mean, you've got questions about the future. You want to know uh, which strengths can you turn to when you've had a bad day so that they can build you back up. You want to know which strengths you can count on to really deliver for you regardless of the situation or the circumstances. You want to know which strengths you're going to get better and better and better at as you invest more training and time in them. You want to know which strengths you're going to be most creative in, have the better ideas in. Basically, you want to know which strengths are going to sustain you and fulfill you as you, as you march on through life. And that old definition of a strength as, as stuff you're good at is just a really bad guide to those questions about the future. That definition tells you that, that in order to know how to, how to plan your future and focus your future, you should, you should look to those activities you're good at. But, but can that be true? I mean, don't you have some activities you're good at, but will leave, which leave you empty or cold? Or they even actually deplete you? Like, like, you may be really good at organizing stuff, just brilliant at arranging everything, getting all perfectly in its place, but it leaves you empty. After two days of like arranging and organizing, you feel this close to bursting into tears. Well, if you have some activity like that, should I tell you that organizing is your future? Organizing stuff is what you should build your career around? Of course I wouldn't. No, the best definition of a strength is an activity that leaves you feeling strong. Because if you think about it, I don't know what your goals are, I don't know what your dreams are, but, but surely one of the objectives of your life is to make the biggest contribution for the longest period of time. Well, if you're going to do that, whatever field you've chosen, if you're going to do that, you've got to... You've got to base that contribution on activities themselves that strengthen you. Whatever you're doing at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning or, or, or 2 p.m. on a Thursday afternoon, whatever that is has got to strengthen you. The activity itself has got to do that. I don't care, I don't care how cool your company is that you've joined or how sexy your job title is or how noble your sense of mission is. If the activity itself doesn't strengthen you, you've got a problem. We're going we're gonna to see you burn out way before we see the best of you. Now, you flip that around. If you deliberately try and install in your working week activities that strengthen you, all kinds of good things happen for you. You'll find that you'll bounce back more quickly. You'll be more resilient when things set you back. You'll find you'll be able to stay focused longer. You'll find you'll be more creative. You'll find you'll set higher goals. 
And of course, the really, I mean, the really relevant thing, you'll wind up achieving those goals more often. Why? Uh, get your head around this, because, because you will get good at things you practice. But you don't practice all activities uniformly, do you? You get drawn into some activities and repelled by others. And those you get drawn into, you practice more and you practice more and you get better and better at them. So you need to pay really close attention to your appetites because your appetites, those activities you're drawn to that fulfill you, those appetites drive your abilities. You need to pay attention to how you feel while you're doing something because how you feel while you're doing something will determine how good you get at that thing. And what about those activities that you're drawn to but you just don't seem to get any better at? We've all got those, don't we? Activities that you have a lot of appetite for and seemingly no ability. Well, we have a word for those activities, don't we? We have a word for all appetite, no ability kind of activities. We call them hobbies. And they stay hobbies because no one's paying us to do them. I mean, I can have the luxury of still going around and hacking away with my golf swing or the luxury of, of messing with my forehand or, or singing gloriously in the shower. And I don't have to worry that I have really no ability for them because no one's paying me to do them. But it's amazing how quickly, when we go back into the real world, back into the world of, of, of work and wages and accountability and performance, it's amazing how quickly we dismiss that as a luxury. It's amazing how back in the real world, very few people maintain a strong appetite for an activity that they manifestly have no ability for. But you know the really brilliant news about defining a strength as an activity that makes you feel strong? It's that the person who's best qualified to identify your strengths, really the only person qualified to identify your strengths, is you. With the old definition, uh, uh, an activity you're good at, well really the, the least qualified person to identify your strengths is you. Because you'd either be too hard on yourself or too generous with yourself, depending on how fragile your ego was. So right from a very early age, you were taught to look to somebody else, somebody outside of you, to confirm or deny what your strengths were. At school, you looked to your teachers, didn't you? At home, you looked to your parents. At work, you were taught to look to your manager and your HR department and that child of theirs, the performance appraisal. But with this new definition of a strength as an activity that makes you feel strong, you don't have to look to anyone else. You know better than anyone else does which activities you're drawn to and which repel you. You know which activities fascinate you and which bore you. You know which activities fulfill you and which leave you feeling cold. You know better than anyone else does if you feel fulfilled and excited meeting new people and winning them over and getting them to like you. If you say you love that, no one can say, no, you don't. They can say, you know what? There's better ways of doing that. They can say, here's a really nifty new way of networking with people. They can even say, hey, look, Marcus, you know what? Sometimes your need to get people to like you and your ability to do that uh, gets in the way of making a sale or gets in the way of serving a customer or, or some other such outcome. And that's okay. You should keep your mind open for feedback like that. That is, that is totally legitimate performance feedback. But what no one can tell you better than you is which activities you love and which you loathe. No one can tell you which activities make you feel strong and which make you feel weak, which fascinate you and which bore you to tears. Here, your perspective is, and will always be, sure and true. So trust it. Look back at your activities last week. Look for those telltale signs of a strength. Reclaim them. No one knows them better than you.